Hey, Bob Hayes here with Region 34 AYSO South Redonda Beach. Welcome to our fourth video. Today we are going to talk about managing kicks from the mark. So let's get started. The first thing to determine is which goal to use. Many fields will have one goal that has an obvious advantage over the other. This could be due to glare from the sun, turf conditions, perhaps fencing behind the goal, better lighting, or any other reason. If there is no obvious advantage to either goal, the referee should flip a coin to determine which end is used. The next step is to toss a coin to determine who kicks first. We typically have the visiting team call it. The winning team gets to choose if they kick first or second. You want to shoot first or you want to defer? Okay. Some things to remember. Only players who are on the field at the end of the match are eligible to participate in the kicks, and that includes any players temporary off due to injury or equipment issues. So keep the players on the field and the substitutes off. The one exception is you can substitute a goalie if he or she is not able to continue due to injury. For players that were warned or cautioned during the match, they start the kicks from the mark with a clean slate, but players sent off during the match are not eligible. If either team has less than 11 players at the end of the match, players must be excluded so that teams are equated. Teams should inform the referee of the excluded players, and they are not eligible to take part in the kicks. Each team decides its own kicking order, and the referee crew does not need to know ahead of time. Now it's time to get into position. Only players and the referee crew should be on the field. Coaches, team personnel, and substitutes should be in the technical area. Spectators should be no further down the touchline than the top of the penalty area. If somebody wants to film the kicks, they can set up a remote camera ahead of time and then join the spectators up the touchline. Players should be gathered at the center circle. The non-active keeper should be at the edge of the penalty area. The first AR stays at the center circle and manages the players. He or she should know which players have kicked and record the score. The second AR should line up where the goal area meets the goal line. His or her main job is to determine if the keeper commits a fault and to confirm the ball crosses the goal line. The center referee is in a normal position for a penalty kick. It is his or her main job to initiate each kick with a whistle and to observe the run-up and the kick. The keeper must have at least one foot on, behind, or in line with the goal line when the ball is kicked. These stances are all legal and the keeper can move but is not allowed to touch any part of the goal or net. The kicker may faint on his or her approach, but is not allowed to faint on the kickoff itself. This is allowed, but this is not. The referee should take time with the keepers to explain the procedures and to remind them about their footing. Each kicker should be allowed to place their own ball. The referee should make sure it is on the mark. kick is complete when the ball stops moving, the ball goes out of play, or the kicker commits an offense. The kicker cannot play the ball a second time. A few more things to remember. If the keeper commits an offense but the ball goes in, it's a goal. If the keeper commits a non-trifling offense and the ball does not go in, the keeper is warned and the kick is retaken. 
a further offense by the keeper requires a caution. If the kicker commits an offense after the initiation whistle, that kick is counted as a miss and the kicker is cautioned. If both the kicker and the keeper commit an offense at the same time, the kick is counted as a miss and the kicker is cautioned. The winner is decided by the best out of five kicks. If one team is ahead before the fifth kick and the other team cannot win, the subsequent kicks are not taken. If after five kicks the score is tied, the remaining eligible players will take alternating turns until there is a winner. Once all eligible players have kicked once, and that includes the keepers, the process continues with players taking a second round of kicks. For subsequent rounds, teams do not have to follow the same order as previous rounds. Except for a keeper, no players may be substituted. If an eligible player is unable to take their kick, that counts as a miss. If a keeper cannot continue, he or she may be substituted. If the original keeper had already kicked in that round, the new keeper would not kick in that round, but could kick in subsequent rounds. If a player is sent off during the kicks, the other team will have to equate by excluding one of their players for any subsequent rounds. So that's about it for managing kicks from the mark. Hopefully you now have the knowledge to manage them confidently and professionally. So good luck and we'll see you next time. Special thanks goes out to... Andrew Ketchmere. Region 34, Redondo Beach. William Hong, AOSO Region 1031. Where's that? South of Lake. Uh, Hope County, uh, Region uh, 15, and that's in uh, Torrance. Cent yeah, Torrance. Central Torrance, yeah. Ben Lager, AOSO Region 84, Mission Viejo.